I'm not sure whether the stewardship committee invited me to speak this morning because I'm the treasurer, or because I'm a long-term member, or because they know I just love a captive audience. But whatever the reason, I am happy to be talking with you this morning. Being the treasurer, my initial approach to this morning's talk was going to be preparing a spreadsheet, maybe even a graph or two, because after all, doesn't everyone, everyone most interested in the numbers about the uh, stewardship drive? But then I decided to review the notes from a, stem, a stewardship seminar I attended several years ago. Lo and behold, the first item in my notes was the phrase, money follows a vision and not an appeal. Well now, there goes my idea of going on and on about having to pay the pastor and keep the lights on, etc., etc. After some reflection, I realized that the speaker at the seminar had a valid point. I remembered being involved in the capital campaign to build Pilgrim Hall. We hired a capital campaign consultant to help us hit our goal of raising $600,000. The first words out of his mouth were, you need to substantially lower your goal or you're setting yourself up for failure. There is very little chance a congregation of your size could possibly raise $600,000. Well, we decided to stick with the $600,000 goal, but we also decided that what we really needed was to clearly articulate what that money would do for the church. I don't remember if we used the word vision in our presentations to the congregation, but that's what we had. And guess what? We raised nearly $650,000. <clears> Likewise, when, less than 10 years later, after that capital campaign, we decided we needed to renovate Fellowship Hall, there were folks who said, it's too soon to ask the congregation for money again. We should wait. Well, the need really couldn't wait, so we forged ahead, again, with a very focused campaign. Although we did not hit our 600,000 goal that time, we came darn close at 575,000. So what these two capital campaigns showed me was that the stewardship seminar speaker was right. The money, indeed, followed the vision to the tune of $1.2 million in 10 years. Unfortunately, the Pilgrim leadership, of which I am a part, has failed to articulate a vision for the day-to-day -day or year-to-year -year operations of the church. During the interim pastorate, we held visioning sessions and came up with priorities, but we have yet to turn those priorities into what I would consider a vision. As a result, no one is particularly inspired to pledge to the annual operating budget. And so we struggle to produce a balanced budget because our pledges are simply not where they need to be. And 2012 is shaping up to be no different. So, am I standing up here to tell you, put away your checkbooks. Because the church does not have a vision, you don't have to pledge? No. I may be a rabble rouser, but I'm still the treasurer. I'm actually asking you to dig a little deeper than you were planning because we have a dynamite staff who deserve to be paid much more than we can afford. And because overall, Pilgrim is a wonderful place that deserves your full financial support. I realize that this is not a vision, at least as I know the word. But my hope is that this, at this time next year, I will not be standing up here telling you we don't have a vision and having to beg for money. Instead, my hope is that we will have a vision for Pilgrim that will inspire all of us to the point of being excited about pledging to the operating budget. And I get excited just thinking about that concept. Thank you.